What's up guys, Paramoto here. How are you guys doing today? Today, I am doing just a fantastic. I hope it doesn't rain on my newly washed Penangali. So anyway guys, I really wanted to make a quick topic video today. And I wanted to get a little bit serious because I feel like most of the conversations that we have about the Penangali 959 is a lot of emotion based not really a lot of facts based and I want to take the time and make more of an objective video about the Ducati Pentagali 959 rather than more of a subjective role as I've been doing this last year. The topic of today's video is going to be is the Ducati Pentagali 959 right for you? When I go and I buy a motorcycle I usually pay attention to three main points and honestly when you go and you buy a motorcycle there's thousands of points that you think about every single time you go. The most minute detail like what the screws and hardware looks like all the way down to the biggest details like what power plant it has, what color it is. The three points that I want to make is cost, usage and skill set are the three points that I want to address on today's video. Honestly, cost is not everything, but honestly, it is also the biggest initial gatekeeper for any purchase that you make in your entire life. So the Ducati Penangali is going to cost you about $16,000, and that is for a little Penangali, but honestly, this is still Ducati Superbike. It still has almost 160 horsepower. It'll still fucking kill you if you don't pay attention. So when people are like, oh, you got the little Penangali. Yeah, this little Penangali is a, is a pretty fucking stout bike, to be honest with you. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. All right, guys, like I said, the first topic that I want to talk about is cost. So the Ducati Penangali is going to cost you about $16,000 out the door. What you get with that is going to be basically a fit and finish that I've never seen on a Japanese bike. Yeah, you can get more for your money. Let's just say like an R1. You can get an R1 for about $16,000. And that R1 will come with almost 50 more horsepower. The fit and finish, I've seen them. I've seen them in the stores. I've seen their, their fit and finish and the specs and the paint and the hardware. It's just not quite there. It's like going Mac versus PC. PC, you might be able to get a little bit more power with the same money that you spend, but you don't get the fit and finish of a Mac. You don't get the user interfaces of a Mac. And there's a reason why Mac has a very large part of the market, even though PCs are cheaper option. Another thing to think about with cost is insurance and maintenance, okay? I would highly recommend if you get a Ducati Penny Galley 959, then you go ahead and you get the extended warranty, okay? The hassles that the warranty alone so far in a year and a half has really just helped me avoid. It's just been tremendous. I haven't really paid for anything on this bike besides for a new rear tire and uh, the first surface. And everything else has been 100% covered. So the warranty for me is almost absolutely essential. <laughs> So guys, besides with the extended warranty, you do have to think about your insurance costs. Insurance for this bike is going to be a little bit pricey because it is a damn near 1,000cc superbike. Honestly, when I first got this motorcycle, I was paying like 130 some dollars a month. I think it was $130 a month is what I was paying for this bike when I initially purchased it for full coverage from State Farm. I have since found out that State Farm is the absolutely fucking ripoff. Don't go with State Farm unless it's your only option. I switched to Geico. And my payment dropped from $135 a month to $89 a month, which is less than what my CBR 600 R cost me. And then what I did is I bought my WR250X, got a multi-line policy, and now I'm paying for two motorcycles for $85 a month, which is not bad at all. One thing that I want to add about the cost is that this bike has a personality, okay? You know that you can go and you can get a brand new 2019, 2020 probably now, Yamaha R1 for the same price and get more power and get a better track missile and stuff like that But it's, it comes down to personality. I really didn't want to be super subjective in this video So I'm only gonna mention this one time and that the personality of the bike is almost like picking out a girlfriend You know your personalities really need a match You know like you you have to want the fit in the finish and the looks and the sound Which is unlike any other motorcycle out there you got to enjoy that stuff to make spending that amount of money worthwhile to you you know, you have to put a little bit of logic aside. I'm not going to lie. I mean, a little bit of logic needs to be put aside to purchase an expensive, exotic super sport. Oh, my God. Do you see that? So many keyed whores in the back of that chick's fucking trunk. Oh, my God. That sucks. <laughs> she sucked at driving. Uh, probably because she was sucking something else, too. <laughs> so the next thing I want to talk about, guys, is your usage. The usage of the motorcycle. This bike is going to excel at some things, and it's not going to excel so much at other things. One of the things that it excels at is being a track weapon, and it does that very well. I haven't tracked it, but a lot of people are very successful at tracking this motorcycle. 
um, at area raceways and stuff like that. It does very well for it. Things it might not do so well, it might not be a great road trip bike. It's, it might not be a great touring motorcycle. I've, Like I've said, I've ridden it 430 miles, I believe, in one day. Plan on doing another long trip here in about a week or so on it. I want to go down to Wilmington, North Carolina. And it does that, and it does it okay. You're going to be uncomfortable and it's reliable so you don't have to worry about getting stranded but there are better options get the way what you're going to do with it are you going to use it as is it a commuter bike um honestly i think it would make a great commuter bike i have commuted on this quite extensively and to be honest with you it's always done well um i don't really like leaving it in my work parking lot where it's subject to get hit by people that aren't paying attention at all but at the same point it is comfortable enough to be a commuter if you if your commute is 30 minutes like mine i've never had a problem with it it's got plenty of power obviously it's got plenty of power to move about in traffic and stuff like that and it does very well and it does fantastic as being a weekend pleasure ride as well so there are things that it excels at and things that it doesn't so much excel at but it will do everything for you and people have taken Penagali's cross country and and everything like that what the fuck is this idiot doing and they've taken them cross country very successfully okay when i started up it still smells new i fucking love this thing all right guys the last thing i want to talk about besides for price and besides for usage i want to talk about your skill set okay and until very recently i had a very polarizing opinion on skill sets with super bikes okay so I have been watching um, a very awesome channel called Life40. He's a subscriber here on this channel. He's got a very exquisite English accent. He's very easy to listen to. And he's got a beautiful Ducati Pentagali 959 Corsa Edition. Go check him out. I'll throw a link in the description down below. Until I started watching Life40's channel, I actually had a very polarized opinion on skill set with super sports, okay? Super sports and super bikes and everything like that. I really feel like you need a ton of experience at least several years riding experience before you get one of these bikes. And I was absolutely 100% opposed to having one of these bikes as your first bike. And I still kind of am. Uh, I can see I can see not waiting and just going and getting your dream bike now because of Life 4.0. I believe your skill set on one of these bikes needs to actually be to the point where you can safely ride them, okay? And maybe that's one year for some people, maybe that's 10 years for other people. But I really do feel like you need to have a good understanding of motorcycles and motorcycling and know how to control things when shit goes sideways before you step up to something that can kill you so easily, okay? I still think the best way to go about starting motorcycling is go get yourself a used 250, okay? And it doesn't have to be a Ninja 250 or anything like that. Personally, I think the best beginner bike is a used dual sport. You know, supermoto trim, you can have a ton of fun with it. It's not really going to depreciate on you. You can turn around and sell it in a year. There will be plenty of buyers because I don't know about you guys, but in my area, it's really hard to find a used supermoto in decent condition, okay? So if you have a Yamaha 250X or a DRZ400, I know that's not a 250, but it's still a dual sport. You can kind of bend it a little bit. It's only got 30 or so horsepower. I think is the best way to go about learning how to ride for multiple reasons. One, you're not going to be overpowered. Two, if it drop, if you drop it, it doesn't fucking matter. You're expected to drop dual sports, okay? You should drop a dual sport or you're dual sporting wrong. So personally, after you spend a year on a dual sport or another 250, a comparable 250, I think you, you should be ready to step up to a 600cc bike and then go on from there as you feel comfortable. I truly do feel like the best way to get the best teaching on a motorcycle is to go 250, 600, and then super bike if you choose to go super bike, okay? Or you can go on to something bigger and like maybe, uh, you know, BMW S1000, XR, or the brand new V4 Street Fighter. You know, it doesn't have to be a super sport or a super bike, but I mean, you can go and get like a naked sander or something like that and it'll work out really well for you. Um, but I still feel like that is the best way to protect yourself, stay as safe as possible, and learn the best way you possibly can. Because honestly, honestly, like if I would have started on a 959 Corsa, that thing would have been dropped. Bikes aren't 100% user friendly the way a Ninja 300 is or something like that. That being mine, I think Life 4.0 is the exception and not so much the rule, but he has changed my mind considerably on what is possible when it comes down to staying safe out here on the streets and learning how to motorcycle. So, you know, all power to you, Life 4.0, you're awesome. Guys, I think this concludes the objective conversation on is the 959 right for you as a motorcycle, as your two-wheeled companion, your trusty steed with two wheels, if I may say so. Honestly, if cost is right with your insurance and maintenance and the extended warranties, if that's right, 
and your usage lines up and your skill sets line up, I think this could be a fantastic bike for you. I think some people, it might not be the best, but I think for a lot of people like myself, for Life 4.0, like for Cameron Sims, I think this bike is a fantastic fit. But that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to like the video. Give me a comment down below. I answer all the comments that you guys sent me. Thanks for watching again, guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Deuces.